Ecclesiastes chapter number seven. Ecclesiastes chapter number seven. We're going to read one verse this evening, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 8. And once you've found it, would you stand with me this evening as we read the Word of God, Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 8. If you have it, give me a good strong amen. amen. Scripture said that was the kind of week that you all sleep out there. If you have it, give me a good strong amen. amen. There you go. Either that or you're still trying to find it. I'm not sure which one it is. Scripture says in verse 8, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. I want you to notice verse that, that first phrase here in this verse. Here it is. Notice what it says. Better is the, what's the next word? End of a thing. I want to take that little phrase. I want to talk tonight on the subject, better is the end. Better is the end. I hope you listen. Father, take these next few minutes and God allow us to be helped tonight. Lord, would you please use me? Thank you for a great morning this morning. Lord, what a great crowd again on Sunday night after such a great crowd this morning. Sometimes you expect everything to be down and yet we still got a pretty good house tonight of people. Thank you for your faithfulness of your people. But now as we're together, we surround your word. I pray that thy word would feed us tonight as only you can feed us, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Starting something is always easy. But getting to the end takes endurance, determination, patience, and focus. I, I enjoy reading. I've not always been a reader, but I've, I enjoy reading. When I was a kid, I would just want to get to the back of the book. Somebody help me out. Forget all the pages. Get me down to the end. Let me see the conclusion. When I'm watching a football game, and of course, there's only one team to watch. I won't, I won't, I won't go any further into that right now, but, um, but. When you, and it's not the Maryland Turpins, whatever that is right there. <laughs> that sounds like somebody got sick. But anyway, and their uniforms look like it too. But anyway, but I, when I watch a game, I want to see the end of a game. Yeah. I, I get too uptight in the middle of the game. Yeah. I want to turn it off, and especially if, my, if it's a tight game, I just... Yeah, you know, my my, I'm I'm a fu I'm funny when I'm watching the game. I get my I get my phone out. I'm not going to watch the game because I don't I can't stand watching if my team's going to lose. Can't stand watching them lose. And so what I do is I don't watch it. I record it, and I'll I'll cheat everyone. I just look at my phone every once in a while. Oh, they're doing good, yeah. And then when they get you know when they get when they get it about two touchdowns ahead, maybe two or three. Oh, I got to watch the game now. And so I, I go, of course, brother, brother Randy couldn't watch any of his team this year. But anyway, but, um, but, but you have to understand. It was just, you know, I, I get it, and, I, and it gets down to the end of the game. And, and, if, and if my team's losing, I just turn it off. See, why? Sore loser. Somebody help me out just a little bit. A few years ago, Alabama was losing to LSU. And we were behind. And I was, I was like, it was on a Saturday night, and I'm thinking, good night, stinking Alabama. What's wrong with them? I went to bed. Went to bed. Next morning, wake up, Alabama won. My daughter stayed up and watched it, but I went to bed. She goes, you should have stayed up, Dad. It was great. Shut up, girl. But anyway, and, um, but I, I, I can't say, I like, I like seeing the end. There's something about seeing the end. But, you know, as good as a start, but starting something is always exciting too. You know, they build the plot and starting something, getting something going. A new church is exciting when you start. A new ministry is exciting. The vision, the dreams, the excitement of what you're going to have when you start something. And, and, you know, it's easy to start something. I've seen a lot of people, a person who's going to go into business, they're excited because they're about ready to start something. A person going to college, they're, they're excited about starting. They go, they, they go, you know, that freshman goes to college that first year thinking they're going to turn the world upside down because they are it. Come on now, somebody help me out. And every, you know, the start of something, you know, a couple's about ready to get married. 
and they think our marriage is going to be different than everyone else's, we will never have a disagreement. Let me help you out. There's a man and there's a woman in the same marriage. Can somebody help me out just a little bit? And men and women don't always get along. You, you, you say, why? Because some of us think higher than others. And I, and I fail to, I, I don't want to start any problems, but I know what side I'm on. But anyway, and, um, but, but. But, but understand this, and, you know, a person about ready to get, they're excited. They can't wait. You know, it's like they're not praying for the Lord to come. They're praying for the Lord not to come because they want to get married. You see, it's easy to start something, but you find out that it's not easy to get to the end. A person who starts an education in college and they go through their freshman year, that's I always tell, I always told the freshman, second semester, first year is tough. Amen. Tough. The excitement of the first semester is is okay, and then you get to finals and it starts weighing on then second semester. I don't know what it is about second semester. It's just hard. And that second semester, you start seeing people dropping out. Then the uh, sophomore year and the junior year, they continue to drop off and drop off until the senior year, and the senior class is just a little bit of what it used to be when they started out. Why? Because they found out it's not going to be easy. You know, have you ever started a project? I know everybody in this room, they finish the projects that start, of course. There are no unfinished projects in your house. Somebody help me out just a little bit. Um, but you, but you have projects that you start and, and it's easy to get excited about that project, but then you start finding how hard it is with that project and, and all of a sudden it finds that closet <laughs> or it finds that room and things get piled over it until a preacher starts preaching on better is the end. And he says you need to unpile that thing and finish what you start. Yes. Why, better is the end. Yes. Many never know the joy of making it to the end of a marriage when your spouse goes to heaven because they quit in the hard times. I think of, I think of the old Daniels been, were married for 50 Fifty years even when Brother O'Daniel went to heaven. Brother Melvin was married for 62, 3 do you know? 71 years you were married? 61. I thought I was going to say, you weren't married. Don't do that to me. I, I, know, I, did your, I know I did your wife's funeral. I know it wasn't no 70. Don't be doing that to me. <laughs> Thinking, man, I messed up. But anyway, 60, you, you don't get there by just quitting. You know, you come on a, you, you have a hard time, and, 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 you, and you start running, and you say, okay, we got to quit. You got to work through it. Yeah. I, was I remember a preacher years ago, I was talking to him, and he says, you know, he says, if you can just get past this stage, he says, it really gets good when you get old. Amen. But he says, you got to get to this stage right here. Can I tell you, you see, better is the end thereof, but can I tell you, there's a lot of things from the start to the finish you got to work through if you're going to get to the end. Let me tell you these things if I can tonight. What's, there's four things that you're going to have to work through. First, you got to have initiative. Write that word down, initiative. You got to start. You got to start. Um, some of you, are, you know, you're afraid to jump in and start something here in the church. You know why you're afraid? Get this now. You're afraid that, well, what happens, you know, if I fail? I was, I was happy for a couple of bus routes today. I was thinking of brother brother Tremble. He's had a he bus route two, right? Bus route two. He took over a route, and we had to um, let go several of the riders. And almost, I mean, he he went right down all the way to the bottom. You say why? Because his workers are no good. But anyway, and uh, but but he he was he 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 went down the bottom, and he kept on working, kept on working. He had 70, 78 on his bus route today. Yeah. I was excited about that. You know why? Cause, because he because kept on working, didn't stop. And the workers on his route kept on working, and they didn't stop. They could have easily got discouraged and say, what's the use? But they didn't stop. I think of Brother, Brother Randy and Brother Sank started a bus route six just a few weeks ago, and today had 40, 
47 on the bus route today, and that was exciting to me to see that, and I could, I could talk about, I think of Miss Evany. Miss Evany has to take two trips every Sunday. And, I, and she has a small bus out there, and they're taking. She was disappointed because she goes, "I was down." Thinking, no, no, you did good. You did good. She was. It was wonderful seeing what went on her route today. And I could go through bus route after bus route and Sunday school class to tell you. I'm telling you. You see, at some point, you're going to have the bumps in the road. You're going to have your failures in life, but you cannot get to the finish line unless you pick yourself up from your failure and say, "Okay, let's get to the end of what we're doing right now." Now. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's good. You got to have some initiative to start something. Listen to me. We always want everybody else to help us get our dream done. No, you got to go do it. Everybody wants to see a big day. Nobody wants to work for it. Somebody help me out. You can say amen because you're part of it. You know, they, and then, so, so because they don't have the big day, they want to criticize those who are having the big day. Well, if you go out there and work like the church that worked to have a big day, you could have a big day. Now, listen to me, but you got to start something at some way. You got to start where you are. You can have all the dreams in the world, but can I tell you, until you start that dream, till you say, okay, here we go. What if I fail? You might fail. Do you realize some of the millionaires in this world in history failed and failed and failed until finally they found the formula for success and they succeeded? You see, you cannot say, oh, well, well, it's just, you know, everything has to be, has to happen for me and, and I, and everything's against me. Yesterday I was out soul winning with, um, um, brother Russ. We, he and I were out soul winning and ran across a guy right down the, um, I'm trying to think where I'm at right now, right down the road down over here. And, um, and I saw him out in his front yard and I, I pulled over. I've seen him before. He and I had talked and, he has, he has a, he, he, he's a, he's a felon. He had, he'd spent several years in prison. Now he's a supervisor for the state of Oklahoma in some area that he works. Get the, listen to me. And he said to me, this is what he said to me. He says, I'm tired. And, and by the way, he's not a white guy. He's a black guy. So he's got what, what, cause society would say is two knocks against him. He said, I decided I wasn't going to let my record hold me back. He said, I took where I was and I found me a job and I started working hard. He says, I wish every young person could get that type of mentality. Can I tell you somewhere, you got to stop using your excuses and stop saying, well, it just can't be done in this day and just say, hey, it can be done in this day. Get some initiative inside of you. The only initiative half the teenagers have is with their fingers. You can't have initiative if you're sitting out there waking up at 11 o'clock in the morning. Get up. You're wasting sunshine. I'm amazed. I go, you know, we, we do so many here at 9.30 in the morning. Go out knocking on doors. By the time they're waking up, I've already put good night 10 hours into my day. I'm, try, I'm trying to think, how do people get up at noon? I don't get that. Can you tell me how that happens, Brother Flores? But anyway, <laughs> do you understand? I'm saying this. I'm saying if you're going to get to the end, there's got to be some initiative. You are going to have some failures, but don't let the failures be the end of your story. There's a second thing that you've got to work through. You've got to work through running. So what do you mean by running? You can't run every time something gets difficult. There's some people, their character is when it gets hard, they run. They think changing the landscape is going to change the hardship. Can I tell you, running is not going to change the hardship. There are hardships everywhere you go. Listen to me. Some, I mean, some people, they can't, they can't stop running because they come on something hard and then they run. It's hard, then they run hard and then they run some point you need to put your anchor down and say I'm staying here we're going to work through this thing and it may be hard I'll figure out the way to get to the end 
stop running. Listen, some point you just got to say, I'm going to stay. I'm staying. I appreciate those who have stayed at this church since I've become pastor. You've probably not always seen eye to eye with me, but you stayed. And you didn't run. And you said, okay, God's doing a work here. I'd rather be involved in something like that than something dead. And you've stayed. And God is blessing. Now listen, all I'm saying tonight is it's, listen, it's hard everywhere. The grass may look green on the other side of the fence, but that grass may be a pile of, of birds that you can't see. Well, I grew up in California. My dad's church was out in the country, cow pasture. I was always amazed. In the wintertime, the grass gets really green out there because we get a lot of rain out in California. And I'm always amazed how the cows will stretch their heads over the barbed wire fence. You may ever see that. They're, they're stretching their head over the barbed wire fence trying to get the grass on the other side. I don't know why it looks so good. But they're stretching their neck out there trying to get it. And right behind them is a whole pile of grass. It's like, this is dumb. Listen to me. It's always, the grass is always going to look greener somewhere else. You know why? You're not there. You don't see the burrs. You don't see the dead spots. You don't see how hard it is. You don't see that other side. Well, you can't. You just see right across that fence. Reason why it's green right across that fence, because nobody walks on the fence line. You'd be wise just to stay right where you are. Listen to me. Well, I want to go to a church where it's easier. Really? Why would you want to back up? Why would you want to miss what happened today? Listen to me. I know some of you are going to go home tonight, and you're going to die when you go to bed. You're in a coma for the next 10 hours until you go to work. But it's a good sleep. It's a good sleep. I got back to the church this afternoon, and I, and, and I forget who else they, uh, they asked me. They said, did you get a nap this afternoon? I said, oh, Brother Dory. He said, did you, did you get a nap? I said, I sat down, and I think about 15 minutes, and then I'm up. My mind starts working. You say, why? Because, hey, hey, you can't, you, I, I've got to stay busy. Now, listen to me. I'm saying this, I'm saying tonight, okay, what keeps us from getting to the end? You got to have initiative. Second, that running, you have to consider that every place, okay, every place you've run, get this now from your problems, your problems were there before you got there. So at some point, why don't you stop and say, how come everywhere I go, those problems are there? Why is it that you're on your fourth marriage? And now you got a problem with your husband again. Or your wife. Got quiet on that one. I got news for you. That other person that you think is so great, reason why you think they're so great, because you don't live with them. But I promise you, when you get when you start living with them, you will find out they have problems like the one you're married to does. It's better just to work through what you have instead of run. What does it take to get to the end? Start. You got to have initiative. Second, running is a, is a problem that gets you that you have to watch out for. Third, being sidetracked. Sidetracked. There's a lot of unimportant things that can get you sidetracked. God placed, listen to me, believer, God placed us on this earth to reach the lost for Jesus Christ. Everything else in life that we do, listen to me, the, the joys of heaven will far outweigh the joys of this earth. I'm not saying that you can't have some good times on this earth, but you've got to watch out that you don't get sidetracked. There's a lot of things in the ministry that I could get sidetracked with, but listen to me, I choose not to. Why? Ministry is more important. I had a preacher call me this week. My wife knows it. He was begging me to come on a Sunday. He says, when can I get you? I said, don't plan on coming on a Sunday. He has a new auditorium. He says, well, I want you to see my new auditorium. I said, I can see it on a Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. 
I said, I got my own church I want to preach to. I said, when you've got people, you got people like that brother Isaiah, he needs me to preach to him. I mean, he's a heathen. Somebody help me out. But anyway, mom and dad said amen on that one. But anyway, do you understand? Do you understand? At some point, you've got to say, okay, I can't get sidetracked. Listen, most important thing Alan Domlin can do is get wrapped up in what he does behind this pulpit here. Stop worrying about the politics. Stop worrying about everything else and say, okay, best thing I can do is get wrapped up in this church, help the people of this church. My time can stay busy trying to help the people of this place. We can get sidetracked by social media. Let me teach you a button off. Sometimes I wonder what would happen if I could get everybody to go on a social media fast for one week or two weeks. What would happen to the spirit of our church? We feed on social media. Listen, there's a lot of losers out there that want to attack those who are doing something because that's the only way they can get a crowd. Listen to me. At some point, you got to say, you know what, who cares what social media says? Listen, I can't get sidetracked. I have my priorities in life. And I say, okay, anything that pulls me away from that, I cannot do. Even if it may seem good, I cannot do it. Illustration. I'm against abortion. I think abortion is murder. But I'm not going to go to a rally against abortion, get this now, on a church night. Not going to do it. Well, don't you love don't you love the unborn babies? I do. But I can do more for those unborn babies by getting the mom and dad say before before they abort that baby than I ever can at a rally somewhere. Listen to me, do you understand? There are good things that we can get involved in, but you can't get sidetracked. What 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 would we have to work through? Fourth thing, sin. Sins ruined many a potential. Listen to me. Some of you, you're here tonight. Your pastor's warned you and warned you and warned you, and you're not listening. But I'm okay. No, you're not okay. You, listen, some of your heart is as cold as last year's winter. Somebody help me out. You could care less about people getting saved. You've not ta- told one person how to get saved. Your heart's cold. You know it. And your and sin has crept in. Listen to me. Sin is a liar, and it never delivers what it says it'll give. Never. It's the biggest fraud out there. And some of you young people, listen to me, you young adults, listen to me. You better listen to some of the gray heads who have been where you are and they've made the mistake that you're making right now, but you won't listen to them. Well, I'm not them. Come on now. You may not be them, but I got news for you. Sin's result. The wages, I preached on this morning, wages of sin is what? Death. It still happens. It's going to get you at some point. Hey, you better watch out. I've pastored some of you since, I mean, listen, for, for almost three years. Some of you have yet to darken an altar. Yet to darken an altar. You're that good? You mean three years God can't move your heart to come to an altar and, and deal with some things? You're that good? I need to shake your hand. Somebody help me out. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not that good of a guy. There are times Alan Domley has to go to the altar. There are times Alan Domley needs to get with God and say, okay, I've got to correct some of these things. But sin dampens our spirit. Sin makes us think we're not that bad.
bad until the destruction comes and then we say, how do I get there? You got sidetracked by sin. Amen. Amen. Okay, preacher, how do I get to the end? If these things can keep me there from getting there, what, 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 what do I have to watch? What do I have to do to get to the end? One, be patient. Be patient. Be patient with yourself. Get this now. And be patient with the process. It won't happen overnight. I hate this word, but I have to be patient. I want everything right now. But I have to be patient. And don't pray for patience. God will take care of that on his own. Be patient. You learn if you're patient, listen to me, with the process that God said. Okay, that's what, okay. Some of you, you're, you're a teenager and you want to be an adult right now. Be patient while you're a teenager and enjoy the teenage years. Some of you are in the single life. You need to be patient while you're in the single life. Why? Because one day you will be married, but in the, t in the meantime, enjoy your single years. Don't be patient with them. Don't listen. Don't rush ahead. So you're going to get to the next stage before you're in the next stage, and now you're going to have, you're going to have sin you're going to have to deal with. Many a young person didn't keep their hands off each other, lost their purity, well, so-and-so else is doing it. They're not so-and-so else. Listen to me. You're no different than anyone else. At some point, we've got to say, okay, let's be patient. It's okay. Hey, it's, it's going to happen. Listen, I, I know, I know. You think, you think. Well, but it's never going to come. It'll come. Be patient. Second, you got to be humble. How am I going to get to the end? You, you say, why humble? Because if, you if you're not humble, the failures will humble you until you are humble. You're going to do things that you're going to fall flat in your face. So that was the biggest flop we've ever done. But you've got to be humble enough to say, okay, we messed up. Let's fix it from here. We can't change the past, but we can go from this point forward. Be humble. You'll have setbacks, but, but you got to be humble about it. Third, have a good spirit. Brother Greg stole my sermon yesterday morning. I've had it in my outline since, um, since Tuesday morning, just so I'll let you know that. I can't believe that you, you read my outline. God says, and let us not be weary in well-doing. What's that? That is good spirit. Can't become weary. Got to say, okay, I can't let my spirit become negative because I've, I've come up against a wall. Weary with well-doing. Okay, so you didn't meet your expectations. Don't beat yourself up. You're okay. You're doing good. Watch your spirit. Stay in top side. You're probably doing more than 99% than of Christians if you're serving the Lord. You're here on a Sunday night. Come on, somebody help me out. So don't, I, I, what I'm saying is have a good spirit. Because if we get negative and so negative on ourselves, we'll quit. Many a person has quit because they got so down on themselves. That's why God says comparing yourselves among yourselves is not wise. If I'm doing the best that I can do, God's pleased. Don't matter how I compare to Brother Hyden, right? Or Brother Turk. Or Brother Harjo. Or Brother Griggs. Or Brother Means. Of course, I'm better than Brother Flo. We all know that. But anyway... You knew it was coming, didn't you? Listen to me. Good spirit. One day you're going to get to the end of the race. You look back. I have a sermon one of these days. I want to preach on clipping coupons. But some who have been through life can look back. 
with joy because of everything that they've done. They've not quit. And they can start, boy, here's a, here's a coupon. I led that person to Christ. Look, they're in the ministry now. Well, I, I led that, that person. I, I, I brought to church as a little child. They're a Sunday school teacher now. Well, I, I taught that person in school, and I, I didn't think they were ever going to make it. Look at them now. They're serving the Lord, the business owner. Look at them. I know sometimes you Sunday school teachers, you think, well, are we getting anywhere? I don't know. That's not time to figure it out. That's where the judgment seat comes in. You just got to watch your spirit every time you come up and you stand behind that little podium and you talk to those people in that Sunday school class. You say, you have a good spirit. Amen. Hey, brother. So you know what? I'm making one impact. If I get one thought in their brain to make them to get to the end, it's worth it. Amen. So if you bust captains, you get to keep that good spirit. Why? You have a bad, what you consider a bad day. You don't know the impact you're having on that one. Why? Might be another sink. Well, maybe you ought to be discouraged. But anyway, might be another sink. Why? He's a bus kid. Huh? How many of you are reached, who in here are reached by a bus ministry? I was going to try to say, Miss, Mrs. Mixon, Brother Shank, oh, Mrs. Day, uh, Mrs. Dickerson, I didn't realize that. Reached by a bus ministry. I'm glad that whoever reached you guys didn't quit. Right. Amen. Knowing Brother Shank, there was probably times he caused his bus captain some headaches. Somebody help me out just a little bit. You can help me out on that. Yeah, that's okay. He's in heaven. If you can get him on speed dial, you're doing pretty good. <laughs> Got to keep on going. Watch your spirit. Amen. Better's the end. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're at the end of this campaign. Yeah. When we started, you know, three weeks ago, it was like, man. And then we started working hard all week long. You know, and you, and you start, you know, and the anticipation. And then you get to the end and you look back and you look at a great day like today. And it's like, wow. Wow, that was worth it. And when people start saying, well, what are we going to do for the next one? That's scary. <laughs> Better's the end. But you got to start. Some of you tonight need to come down to this altar. And it's time to start getting involved. Get involved. Some of you need to, need to start, get the negative thoughts of running out and say, I'm going to stay. Not quitting. Right. Not running. Yeah. I may hit rock bottom, not running. Amen. Some have been sidetracked. But things that are, they're good things, but they're unimportant things. Some of you have let sin in your life, whatever it is. Let's get to the end. Better's the end thereof. Better's the end thereof. I don't think I'm close to the end. I've got 30 something years of ministry under my belt. And I remember when I started, I'd never dream of what God's done up to this point. Exciting. Been a great ride. But I'm still pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I may have made it to here and just said, okay, I'm right here. I think I'm going to stay right here. And I say, no, I think at, at, at 52 years of age, I want to find me something a little bit higher. Well, well, we get a little bit higher. We hit, had a good day. Good day. I wonder, I wonder, man, we got to get higher. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. This may be dangerous. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. You say, where's next? Get a vision. Stop dying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
gotta do something. Man, I hope I can get down from here. Yeah, I will get down. Thank you very much. I will get down somehow. Listen to me. It's time some of you start climbing again. You've watched from the sidelines long enough. Get in. It's a great ride. Father, tonight. I'm so glad. God, that you said better's the end. It means that we got to keep on going until we get there. Never stop. Never stop. Keep on pressing. Keep on climbing. Until we get to the end. That's when we cross the shores to the other side. God help us tonight, please. Heads are bowed, eyes.